Welcome to another episode of Mighty Car Mods, proudly supported by Just Car Insurance. In our last episode, Marty revealed his very uninspiring new car, which was a Volkswagen Polo, which he decided was rubbish for what he needed it for. That's right, and I may have mentioned last episode that I have a new car. And it's about time, Martin, you showed us your new car, because it's taken you too long to show us, and we want our money back. What do you mean you want your money back? You didn't pay anything. Dude, I want my money back from my YouTube subscription because you took too long to finish your car and I've been waiting. You don't pay for YouTube subscription. Anyway, I completely understand why these cars have a cult following and here is why. Why, Martin? No, no, no. Oh, we're going to show a secret so why it's cool. Yeah, okay, cool. I get on it because we cut into the bit where I say, Hey, maybe it's fun. Yeah. That's right, I got myself an MX-5. This particular model is a 1990 Australian delivered Mazda MX-5. It's got hardly any luxuries with no power steering and only a few of them ever came with aircon. It's also got an open rear diff, which means it can be a bit difficult getting that lack of power to the ground. It's one of the best selling two-seater sports cars ever made and I can completely understand why. 1.6 litre engine in the front, double overhead cam, driven wheels at the back, two seats, completely impractical, but as a driving experience, it's some of the best bang for buck you can get in any car. This particular example, I saved it from the hands of the wreckers. A friend of mine rang me and said, there's this MX-5 for sale, it's not in the best condition, it's been outside for most of its life, do you want it? It's got rust in it. And I said, of course I want it, it's got rust in it. Anyway, so I bought it and I've fixed it and I've completely fallen in love with it. It is such an awesome driving experience, but there is one very, very big problem with this MX-5 and most MX-5s. It is so slow. So slow. See, there is a good thing. For all problems in this world, there are solutions. And some solutions involve compressing air. Oh, Martin! Are we going to do the episode that people have been asking for for so many years? They have been saying, please, can you show us how to turbocharge a car? So that's what we're gonna do! And we're gonna be getting hippie on y'all because we're gonna be using recycled chisel, not like olive oil and recycled condoms but recycled bits from around here with some custom fabrication. We're not buying an eBay kit. And Martin, it's not for the faint-hearted. It's not for the faint-hearted. It's a big job, but it's completely worthwhile. And this is so excited, I almost fell over. You almost vomited into your own mouth. So come with us on this amazing journey of discovery. That was awkward, Martin. It was, it was really freaking awkward, man. So we are going to be turbocharging this MX-5. We are in the Sunshine Coast, which is not sunny. We want our money back. It sucks massive unicorn wang. And we're up at, where are we, Martin? We're at AM Auto with the turbocharging Yodas. That's right. This is the home of the Yodas of all things that go choo-choo. And we're turbocharging the car in one day. We're driving in NA. We're leaving choo-choo. It's going to be mad. The MX-5 is rolled into the shop. Never again to be a naturally aspirated powered car. So Turbo Yoda, you've been doing these turbo things for around 10 to 15,000 years now. Uh, can you tell me what the difference is? I mean, one of the reasons we're here, of course, for your Yodaness and classiness is because you can make these incredible manifolds and apparently, you know, you've got a name in Australia as the best. That's what I heard, which is why people call <laughs> you the Yoda. Turbo. Can you talk me through the difference between doing something like this compared to buying a cheap one off eBay? What's the deal with them? All right, so we're making our manifold out of a, of a thick wall material, so it's, it's very strong. Uh, you can weld it up so it's self-supporting. It's not gonna break very easily. Uh, the manifolds that you buy for cheap that are all shiny uh, and look great, they're usually just MIG welded together by uh, a chap in China and then they go over the top of them with a, a pulse TIG welder so it looks all nice and dotty and shiny and stuff. Yeah, right. Inside them there's often filled with stalactites of weld that break off and destroy turbos and that sort of thing. It has happened Horrible. multiple times. <laughs> oh, you've seen that to happen? Us. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. Okay. So uh, what customers come in and they've bought them yeah. and go, why doesn't my car work yeah. anymore? And you say, because you bought an eBay manifold. Uh, we fitted them and lost a couple of $2,000 Garrett turbos wow. <laughs> because of it. Yeah, it's not yep. much fun. 
Great. Right. So I guess by doing it this way, I mean, because one of the other things you can do with the MX-5, if you want to keep the flange, you can just chop through, right? Yeah, on the, in this case, the MX-5's manifold has got, it's a tubular manifold that's fabricated. So you could, in this case, you could have just lopped that off, but we've already bought a flange because we didn't know that. So yeah, yeah, yeah that's, a, that's a saving that could be had. Yeah, okay, good to know. So obviously, if you are going to buy one off eBay, the shinier, the worse it is. That could be the case. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of parts in the engine bay that need to go because they won't go choo-choo and they won't go stu -stu -stu -stu. Okay, so probably the most common email we get is people saying, what do I need to turbocharge my car? So we've laid it all out. We're gonna show you exactly what you need, starting with danger to the manifold. Exactly right. So that is a manifold off an MX-5. Normally the pistons just put the exhaust gas through those holes and it goes out there and into the world. But that's no good for turbocharging. We need one of these beauties and that's a turbo manifold, so instead it shoots the exhaust gas into there and then up into the turbo. But that means the turbo can get very, very hot, Martin, and so what's required is something to keep it cool, isn't it, Martin? That's exactly right. Something like this, so something then... like some new gaskets, something like some water lines, something like some banjo bolts. But they don't just need water, they also need, turbos need uh, an oil feed, so that's an oil feed line. Uh, on the MX-5 block, luckily there's already um, an oil supply there, so we just tap into that, send that into the top of the turbo, and then bung that into the sump, which will be the oil return line from the turbo. Exactly but right. we want to have the air cool, don't we, Martin? Colder air is smaller than bigger air, that's how hot, hot air's balloon. That's actually the opposite of a hot air balloon. Uh, front mount in the cooler, that's going to cool the air down so that what goes into the engine has a bigger bang with some pipes on it. You've probably seen them before on a VL Commodore. Exactly right, but all that's pointless unless you have a way to tell the uh, engine exactly how much fuel it needs. So you need an ECU, you have to have some way of controlling the fuel. So we're going to use a Megaswirt plug and play, plug straight into the existing loom. We program it with that and a laptop. And the last thing you need, Martin, is a mate who had a Forester who upgraded his turbo to a VF34. He's going to give you his TDO4 for free, the turbocharger. Now, you can see why people call that a snail. It actually looks like a snail. In fact, Money, do you know what the worst job in the world is? Um, cleaning a stripper pole at an all-male strip club? Dude, even worse. Snail dentist. Do you know how many teeth snails have? No. 14,000. They do not have they teeth. Have, dude, that is a fact. There's no teeth. Snails have 14,000 teeth. Not only that, do you know how long a snail lives for? 15 years. And here's the freakiest bit. Yeah. Do snails have a penis? No. Do they have a vagina? No. You're wrong on both counts. They've got both. They're hermaphrodites. When a snail meets another snail, it just changes its bits. So, we're going to get you some number plates. Hermaphrodite for your <laughs> MX-5. Can I just have... Because it's a snail. Can I have turbo MX or something? No, hermaphrodite for you and your MX-5. Because the snails have a penis and a vagina. I don't want a turbo anymore. So Al, the Turbo Yoda and myself are going to start by pulling apart this side of the engine. The airflow meter's got to go, the exhaust manifold's going to go. We're going to make some room so we can measure everything up for our mad turbo install. We need to remove all the parts that get air in and out of the engine because we're going to be changing all of it. Now, in case you're wondering why we're also keen to get rid of this thing, that is an airflow meter, and it's a particularly old style one with it. It's called a vein airflow meter, and actually literally has a tab in there that moves when the air is sucked through it. Now, it's not hugely efficient, but it does work, and they don't break down compared to the traditional kind of hot wire airflow meters. But we're happy to get rid of this because the new setup is not going to use an airflow meter. It's going to use manifold pressure, revs, and inlet temperature to calculate exactly how much fuel needs to go into the engine and then reference the map. But this is going in the bin, which is super exciting. Next up, the exhaust heat shield and O2 sensor need to come off so we can remove the non-choo-choo -choo manifold. In keeping with our combi driving, organic earth coffee meditation hippie style build, Al digs out a used silicon joiner for the intake. That's going to come out of one end of an intercooler, right? Yep. So this 
is the engine breather, which is obviously can't go on the pressure side anymore. It's got to go into the pre-turbo side of the engine. Quick and otherwise boosted air goes into the motor rather yep. than oil coming out of it, right? Not like that at all. Look at it, it's looking, looking bare already. Probably. Manifold's got to come off. All the intake stuff's off. Awesome. Yeah, that was made specially for us. X-Force muffler, X-Force big muffler. Big tip. You almost put your hand in there, look at it. There's your nice wide band, you like that? Yep. Yeah. And so our dump will go down in there. You just take the same path as that through there. Awesome. But instead of just coming out of cylinders, it's coming out of a Forrester turbo. Yep. So much better. Best thing about his Forrester. <laughs> I'm gonna use it. <laughs> There's a heap of room under there for an intercooler, isn't there? Sure is. There's just not much room for piping. No. There's a spare intercooler I found. Is that going in our Mazda? I reckon it'll fit it pretty good. Oh, let it go. Got a few bits off, it'll go in nicely. As awesome. you can see, it's been previously modified. That's all right. We like recycling. This turbo conversion is all about recycling. That's it. Good for the environment. So the next choice we've got to make is whether our intercooler piping is going to be alloy or whether it's going to be stainless steel. Now, alloy is cheaper and it's lighter, but it's harder to do good, clean welds on. Now, stainless steel is heavier, but it's stronger and it's easier to do mad, clean welds on. And plus, it's not going to get holes rubbed through it when it's touching stuff in the car, which does happen. The, uh, the Turbo Yoda tells us that apparently that happens all the time with this and we don't want extra holes where there shouldn't be a hole because that's just rude. So we're going to go with stainless steel. Hello. We aren't using the whole front section of the original exhaust so it gets removed and disposed of thoughtfully. <laughs> You're learning real fast. Bye bye, definitely don't need these. There's tons of space, man. It's made for turbo. Let's, have a, let's have a look. That's awesome. There's tons of room. And we've got to make a manifold to join him up. Yep. Twist that around. Add a thing on there. Get some boost control and some water and oil in it. That's it. All done. Nearly finished. <laughs> yeah, no. Well, we're going to basically rotate the core because we're going to lay the turbo on its side because that's just how it fits the best. Um, with his TD turbos, Difficult to rotate the compressor housing because the wastegate actuator is bolted to castings in the housing, which if you do rotate it, which you can, you have to weld new ones on, which is a lot of fiddling around. Mm -hmm. In this case, I reckon we can just rotate the core, so the drain holes it down here instead of there, and we will mount the turbo like that instead of like that. Right, so we're just rotating the middle part basically yeah. to make the oil and water lines match up. That's right. One. And of course we're going to cut that flange off there and just put a uh, normal slip on two inch there so we can just slip a piece of silicon on there. Easy. It is. Just another day in the office that's actually a workshop. Might pull the compressor housing next. With a big circlet. Very, very hard to get off. Nice. Look at that. Right, so we got this circlip off as very difficult, uh, two-man job. So now I can pos pop the compressor cover off. It's O-ring fit, so it can be a bit tight. Main thing is not to kick it, so you don't dig the compressor into the cover. So there we are, massive. Whoa. I think that's something like 46 mil, which is big enough for an MX-5. So this is a really good opportunity to see the guts of a turbo up close. That's the core from our TDO4, you can see. That's the turbine, that's one of the exhaust spins, and that's the compressor wheel, which compresses the air that then goes into the engine. We've got our oil feed and drain, as well as the coolant pipes to keep it cool. Now this is a 2876. You can see the massive size difference. 
That was on a Subaru. Now this comes on a Subaru 2.5 litre Forester um, from factory. That was on a 2.5 litre Subaru engine as well. And you can see that the size is massively different. So when people talk about lag, you know one reason why. There's so much more weight in that as well. It doesn't sound too healthy. Whereas our one, TD04, is really light. It takes hardly any effort to spin, which is awesome because on our little 1.6, it's gonna be mad. This turbo is the TD04 that we removed from my Forester in the Season 4 Turbo Upgrade episode. The flange bolts to the top mount intercooler, but being that this is all about front mounts and hairdressers and not soccer mums and not top mounts, it needs to get chopped. So now we're just going to weld in a two inch piece of pipe on there with a bead roll on it. So we can just put a piece of silicon straight on it and instead of messing around with the flange mounts. That's never fitting a Forester ever again, is it? No, it's not. But it's pretty much not good for a Forester anyway. So. Okay, the next job is we've got to put in the intercooler, kind of get that position. Then we can do the cold side and then we mount up the, uh, the custom piping on the hot side, which is going to be hot. Now, what I was thinking for Marty was a little bit of VL Commodore spec. So just kind of mounting it there. Um, then we can get a hammer and we're just going to bash the bottom in of it a bit because we want it to look like it's been through a drive through and, yeah. and not quite made it over a speed hump. Um, the other option is a more angular mount like this, uh, which is pretty hot in Japan right now apparently. Yeah, yeah. zip ties. Uh, which is cool, zip tie that on. Or we could actually connect the whole intercooler up and make it work, in which case it probably needs to be more sensible. Um, we've got a bit of a problem here with the, um, with the air conditioning, but a bit of your man strength yes. has tweaked that. Like, like a metal nipple, really. And this here is now fitting right up here. There's so much space in this MX-5 and the engine bay under it, I can't believe it. It just it makes it a pleasure to, to tweak its, its metal nipple, doesn't it? It's made for a turbo. Um, from here, what's the plan? Uh, plan is now we'll get it sitting in situ. Uh, we'll make some uh, brackets to come off the intercooler and mount it to the steel on the body, make it nice and rigid so it doesn't move around and rub on anything. Uh, and then we can start knocking up some pipes and get it all plumbed up. Awesome. Are you happy with that placement and position, Martin? Excellent. So we've got the core back in. Um, the drain used to be down here because the turbo used to be like that. So now we've got to put reposition the compressor housing. Uh, it has to stay the same position relative to the turbine housing because of the wastegate actuator. So we're gonna sort of figure out where it's gotta go and then we need to re-drill this little hole here, which is our located dowel that that pin goes into. Um, but we gotta pretty much make the manifold first and work out exactly where the turbo is gonna fit as far as we might have it straight or we might have it up a little bit, we might have it down a little bit. We'll work that out when we get there, and then we can finally assemble the turbo again, then. So we're going to have a pipe, two inch pipe coming out of there and going down into the front mount, right? Yeah, we have to. And then the dump coming off the back down yep. there. So we just have to figure out how to route how into build piping, because that's a little bit tricky as far as space goes. There's a lot of hoses and stuff down there, so. With our turbo positioning somewhat figured out, we can organise the oil return to the sump. What we normally do is obviously drill a hole in the sump uh, and put a fitting into it. Um, this horrifies some people, but we don't weld them in there. We uh, put a brass fitting with tapered thread and put uh, like metal, liquid metal on it because welding the sump is very difficult and warps it and it takes too long. So this engine actually has an old drain fitting for some reason on the opposite side of the engine but it's a long way away and uh, basically we want to show you how we normally do it so we're going to drill a hole in the sump with this this is a Christmas tree drill we call it step drill whatever you like it's awesome best invention ever so we're going to just get stuck in and start drilling a hole Now this part might scare some people, but with both the drill bit and tap greased up, very little swarf actually enters the sump, and any that does gets flushed out with the oil and then the cleaning solution. With that all done, we can get to work on our turbo manifold. So all the bits of our manifold, we've got our flange plate that's specific for the MX-5 and specific for that 1.6 litre engine. It's pretty common, so we're lucky there. We've also got our 90 degree bends, which we then clean up. 
they're going to get tacked onto there. Then we're going to be putting that cross piece in the middle. And then importantly, we've got the flange, which used to be an up pipe when it was on a Subaru. Um, that's going to get attached. Now, we're going to leave this all in bits. We're going to kind of just mock it up on the engine to make sure it fits before we weld it for the final thing. You can do this job with a $500 welder off eBay. No dramas at all. Turbo. It's just, uh, this one's easier to use. So your $500 welder probably it doesn't have um, high frequency start, so you can't just press a button and it starts. It, you've got to put it in proximity and let it strike its own arc, which is takes a very steady hand. Um, this one's high frequency, so you basically just hold it in this position, press the button, it does all the work for you. Computers, etc. It's also water cool, so we can weld very high amps and this won't melt because that's what happens to them and you can't hold on to them. At this point, if we were going for maximum show car street cred, we could weld up a tune length manifold using stainless steel. The truth is that with some practice, anyone comfortable with a welder and some tools could create this kind of log style manifold that is strong, cheap, and will be way down the list of parts holding the car back in power when it comes to tuning. The beauty of this manifold is that we can also position the turbo exactly where we want it. Turbo manifold. Started. Because we're going to have it forward. We're basically going oh, to. So we send the gas towards the turbo. Yeah, we that. need to send it. It's a simple manifold, but you still need to use just a little bit of common sense about which which direction the gas is going to flow. The very same bends we used for the two outside runners on the manifold are used to create the inner ones as well. It's a little more complicated as they need to be shaped to fit and flow smoothly. An angle grinder with a flat disc and a belt sander are really useful. Once the pipe is shaped correctly and tacked, it can be welded into the main runner. The manifold is bolted and tack welded to the thick C channel. This may seem a bit extreme, but it prevents any chance of exhaust gases escaping around the manifold once you're on boost. In this case, that means zero danger to the manifold. Welding two different material sizes can be tricky. Most of the heat needs to be directed into the thick manifold flange and then transferred carefully to the tubular bends. The next step is to get the right flange for the turbo onto this manifold. Now this is a Subaru one and this is where we're going to save ourselves some coin because we're using a TDO4 which happened to be free because it came off Moog's Forester. But these, these Subaru turbos are cheap anyway so you can save yourself a bit of money by getting one of those but you need Subaru flanges. So by making a custom manifold we can put this wherever we need to go to make it fit and save lots of cash. The newly welded manifold is then cut from the C-channel and cleaned up on the finisher. We can now orient the turbo the correct way in the engine bay, so the compressor housing goes back on our freshly rotated turbo. The plate's lined up and marked, and then our manifold drilled, cut and welded, so the turbo sits exactly where we want it. Next up, we've got to get our second-hand front mount fitted up to the front of the MX-5. Normally when we're front mounting, Marty, there's uh, something underneath the radiator where we can mount the bottom of the front mount, but there's nothing here, so we're going to try and weld some brackets on the side. Actually, we're not going to try, we're just going to do it, um, and then run two more brackets off the top, uh, and then it's going to be nice and rigid, ready for its tweakage. It's going to be mad. Looks really good, man. Look at it. I still think we should go VLO, VL spec. A lot of people watching right now are going, please make it VL Commodore spec like this. Dude, no one is saying please make it VL Commodore spec Dude. like three people. Alright, so 
So this is our brass fitting that's going to be our oil return line, which is going into the sump. We already drilled the hole for it. Now this just gets wound in down here. Like a bought one. That is the bung that Mazda conveniently put in the side of the engine for us. And we're gonna screw in our adapter to go on our oil line. Same thread, awesome. And so this goes onto our, onto our bung via the adapter. And yep. then that's when you're on top of our turbo. The top of the turbo need an adapter as well, I'm yeah, not sure. It does, it's actually got the exact same thread as the block's got, so. Oh, cool. Yeah. And yeah. we've also got a 90 degree fitting, which will probably come in handy, handy as well. And is there any benefit to having a braided line? Because a lot of factory ones are just like steel pipe or something, right? Yeah, because they make millions of them and so they can make the, the make them in bulk. Uh, it's very hard to make a, a steel line yep. economically and got to get it straight. Yep. That's easy. They're cool. cheap. Throw it on. Straight and off oil, can, no done. And the turbo has oil. Bang. Yep. Job done. While Yoda sorts out our turbo oil feed, I remove Marty's not yet VL mounted intercooler so we can make up some brackets. Dude, this is like the perfect car for it to turbo like an NA engine, I reckon. Yeah, I think so. Because if you had a Nissan, you'd already, you just stick a turbo, like stock turbo engine in it. You get a, like a non-turbo Silver or something. Get a Silvia motor, same as Subarus. Yeah, guess the thing is though, some people with like naturally aspirated engines don't have an opportunity just to do a straight up engine swap. Yeah. Um, like whether it's, an old Subaru or some weird BMW or something. This is good, and I guess the thing is that people could do it really cheap as buying stuff from eBay and whatever, but that's not what this is all about. This is about getting stuff that we had and people that we know to make stuff and yeah. just repurposing Martin. Exactly. It's it's like the tofu burger of the car world, isn't it? It's like get a bit of to a bit of turbo from over there, a few bits over there, yep. a couple of hundred bucks worth of bits, and some mates help with some stuff, and you got a turbo car. Absolutely. But that said, if somebody wanted to do it all themselves, they could buy a manifold off eBay and the turbo, and it'd yep. still be a, a, a relatively cheap project. It's actually the computer and the tuning and the dyno time that's going to chew up the money, isn't it? Exactly. I mean, you can buy you could buy exactly what we're doing as a kit for like three grand probably yeah um like with all these parts on them you don't have as much choice about location or that kind of stuff but i guess you're buying the r d because someone else has already done it yeah um but yeah you still got to go through all the, the rest of the stuff yeah but the install is the same regardless yeah. of whether you make this yourself yeah. i kind of like it it's custom and it fits this car perfectly with the kind of turbo we want perfectly and yeah repurposing exactly recycling bits it's mad it's it mad next time on mighty car mods Um, does she all watch the show? Sometimes she does. Oh wow. Yeah. But she would never watch Beyond the Credits, and it's the only place we would use this. Well, we never mention Cheryl unless it's credits. Yeah. Or unless you're being rude. Poor Cheryl. No, she's alright, man. She's she just not. needs a bloody time machine. And <laughs> time <laughs> Just come back 30 or 40 years. Dude, why do you think I love DeLorean so much? Dude, she had, she, she had, had a mission. She had a Cheryl in the image of the 1940s when she was hot. Dude, she had her 75th birthday five years ago. Like, and I know it's a big night, you and I, you know, we got pretty yeah, close. Yeah, ages equal 100. Oh, dude. 
That's why we're a hundred percent. That's what we say to each other. She's the seventy on the no, she's the seventy one on the twenty nine, and then together we're a hundred. That's romantic, dude. Oh, Just because yeah. you don't know that kind of romance, no, doesn't mean you need to give me any grief. I want that romance. I just Not want to be you know, <laughs> She mine. 